In number five, um, you notice that there are three terms. One's a squared cosine, one's not a squared cosine, and one's a numerical value, and they're equal to zero. When you see these three things, your first uh, clue should be to factor, just like you would if there were no cosines and there were just x's. So I see that I have two cosines squared, and the only way I'm going to get that really is to take two cosine times cosine. So two cosine times cosine is two cosine squared. The last number is a one and it's negative. So I have to have one times one, and now I just got to figure out where to put the negative sign. I want my middle term cosine to be positive, so that means that my two cosine must be positive, which means I have to put the plus in the second parentheses. I can always go back and visually check. So first times first is two cosine squared. Last times last is the negative one, so the ends are okay. To get the middle term, I do the inners and the outers. The inner gives me negative one cosine. The outer gives me positive two cosine, which when you combine the like terms, you get positive one cosine. And now we're back to the zero product property thing. That says either my first parentheses must be equal to that zero, or my second parentheses must be equal to that zero. If I solve those independently, I kind of like the one on the right better, so I'm going to do that one first. So I've got the cosine of x equals negative one. Where's my cosine negative one? Pi. So x equals pi. And again, if you look up above, they're talking about in radians, so you should respond in radians. On the left-hand side, if I'm answering this one, <coughs> I move the 1 over. I get 2 times the cosine is equal to positive 1. I can divide both sides, of course, by the 2. So then I get the cosine of x equals positive 1 half. So then I go look at my unit circle. I need to figure out which cosines I'm talking about. Cosine is a half at pi over 3 angles. So you want the pi over 3 angles that produce positive a half, which will be in the first quadrant. So that means x equals pi over 3. And you need the one in the fourth quadrant, which is 5 pi over 3. From your unit circle that you have memorized. In number 6, what's different about number 6 and number 5? Mason? There's two different, like, cosines. There are two different trig things. One's cosine, one's sine. If you notice back in number five, when we had a square, a not square, and a number, we saw that we had the cosine squared, the cosine, and then the number. If you ever get them so that they're not the same, but they're still three things, you're going to take the one that's the square and use a Pythagorean identity and change it. Write yourself a note. Yeah. I notice that these two things are different. And what you're going to do is you're going to change the square with a Pythagorean identity. What does that mean? That means that as I look at that equation, instead of writing down 2 cosine squared, I'm going to write down 2 parentheses. And then instead of cosine squared, I'm going to write down 1 minus sine squared. And then I have plus 3 sine x, of course, minus 3 equals 0. And so what I've done is I've taken this cosine squared thing and I've changed it into 1 minus sine squared. The reason I did that is now all of the things that I see in this equation are all sines. That's why I did that. If I distribute out the 2, I'll have 2 minus 2 sine squared x plus 3 sine x minus 3 equals 0. Um, I see a positive 2 and a negative 3. I'm going to combine those. I have negative 2 
sine squared x plus 3 sine x and then a minus 1 equals 0. And I don't know about you guys, but when I do factoring, my squared term is always positive when I have everything equal to 0. Always. So one of the strategies there is to multiply everything on both sides of the equation by negative 1. The practical effect is that all the signs change. That means that I'm going to have 2 sine squared x minus 3 sine x plus 1 equals 0. So now the next steps are the same as in number 5, because we're set up like number 5. I'm going to factor 2 sine x in the first parentheses, and then 1 sine x in the second. I know that's still all equal to 0. If I'm going to get the positive 1 out, I have to have a 1 times a 1. And I can either go positive times positive or negative times negative. And since I see a negative sign somewhere in my equation, I'm going to have two negatives being multiplied together. And then, of course, I visually check that. So 2 times sine x times sine x is 2 sine squared. That's good. The last negative 1 times negative 1 is the last positive 1. Negative 1 times sine is negative 1 sine. Negative 1 times 2 sine is negative 2 sine. Negative 1 sine and negative 2 sine is a total of negative 3 sine. And I do have what I need. So now I set each of those things because of the zero product property equal to zero, meaning I have 2 sine x minus 1, that can be the zero, or I have the sine of x minus 1, that can be the zero. If I solve the right-hand side one, and move the 1 over, I'm asking where the sine of x is equal to 1. That only happens at pi over 2 on the unit circle between 0 and 2 pi. And on the other side, I have 2 times the sine of x equals 1. Or in other words, I'm asking about where is the sine of x equal to 1 half. So I can use my unit circle, look for where the sine's a half. That occurs at all pi over 6 angles on the unit circle, but we only want the ones that are positive. So those are the ones that are in the first and the second quadrant. So that means that you have pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So there are three answers here. <coughs> Number seven. Ready? Yes, Ready. Happy hump day. Yeah, hump day. Thank you. Yeah. Number eight. In number eight, what we notice here is there's something very different going on. There's a 2t, which means that I'm going twice as fast. So normally on the unit circle, when I say something like, where is the cosine 1 half, or the sine root 2 over 2, you come up with two answers on, in a period. But if you're going twice as fast, there'll be four answers. Three times as fast, six. Ten times as fast, 20. If you're still looking for those answers on the same interval, meaning that you're going to 2 pi. Now, if you're only going in the period distance, there's only going to be two. But if you go to 2 pi, which is the normal period, you'll multiply it by how fast you're going to find the number of answers. So I'm going to solve this problem like I normally would, but then afterwards I have to realize that there's more than one answer. Or more than two, I should say. So let's solve this equation. We get 2 times the sine of 2t, that 2t is my angle measurement, equal to negative 1. We divide both sides by the 2 in front of the sine, and we get the sine of the 2t equals negative 1 half. So don't forget this 2t thing is the angle that we're talking about. The 2 is telling us that we're going twice as fast. Now let's say, just for the yeah. sake of argument, that I didn't see the 2t there, and all I see 
is that angle. It's an orange blob. If I want the sine of the orange blob to be negative one half, that's asking me where do I see the sine as a negative a half? So look on your unit circle. What kind of angles have the sine equal to negative a half? Pi over six. Okay, that one, time up, time up, slow down. So basically we're talking about pi over six angles, right? Yeah. Okay. So the first one that you come to, that's a pi over six is so seven, seven pi, pi over six. And the second one that you come to is 11 pi over 6 on your unit circle. Everybody check and make sure you can see that. Do you guys see that? The sine's negative a half at 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. But this orange blob is what we normally do when our period's 2 pi. But I'm going twice as fast. I know I'm going twice as fast because the angle was an orange blob. It was actually 2t. 2t. But I'm not looking for t. Or, sorry, I'm not looking for 2t. I'm just looking for t. So if I'm going to find t, what that means is that I have to divide the 7 pi over 6 by 2. And dividing by 2 is really the same as multiplying by a half. And when I do that, I find out that my angles are 7 pi over 12 and 11 pi over 12. Well, wait a minute. Mr. Joachim, you, you told me that there should be four. four answers. The reason you're only seeing two is because these two purple answers are talking about between zero and pi, the new period. How do I get to the next two? Do it again. Remember at the very beginning we talked about the general term? How many times you could go around the circle? How many times do I have to go around? Twice, because it was a 2t. So how do I get to the next one after I have 7 pi over 12? Add the period, pi. So I know that because of this thing right here, the period is always equal to 2 pi over the b. So in this case, that's 2 pi over 2, which is pi. So I know my period is pi. So in order to find your next two answers, all you're going to do is you're going to take the two answers you have, which are two of the answers, and add on pi to each of them. Don't forget that in our case, since you see the denominator is 12, that this pi is really like 12 pi over 12, right? Because 12 divided by 12 is 1, so it's common denominator. So I look at 7 pi over 12, and I add on 12 pi over 12, and my next answer is 19 pi over 12. And then I look at 11 pi over 12, and I add on 12 pi over 12, and my last answer is 23 pi over 12. Notice how I have four answers, because I was going twice as fast. Okay, time's up. If I'm solving this problem, 